Hello guys, and today we are diving into the top five Starfield creations you really need to check out. All of the creations you're about to see are free on the Xbox Creation Store and are also available on PC. Let's go. Our first is Underwater Diving by Ghost Rider 231. Have you ever wanted to dive under the ocean waves? Well, this creation lets you. But you might regret you did because what's under the waves is weird. Below the city of Neon, we can see dozens of alien sharks just swimming silently beneath the surface. But what's even weirder are the human NPCs who have somehow fallen in and are now doomed to tread water down there forever. There's a neon security guard just paddling along and a random woman who, when I view her through my scanner, it turns out she's actually a bounty target. So maybe she thought this will be a good hiding space. Not from me though. Thanks for the credits. Now, one strange thing about the underwater creation is that you can't do this in third person. Whenever you try and switch to third person, the camera rests on top of the water. So unfortunately, you can't see your character doing their chosen swimming stroke, but what you can do is go right to the bottom of the sea floor and examine marine life like in a Planet Earth documentary. There's actually an invisible floor which stops you about halfway down, but if you open up the console and type TCL, you can no clip through this invisible floor and get right to the bottom. Most of the underwater stuff from the previous Bethesda games are still present, so there are bubble noises and you gasp for air when resurfacing, and you can even drown if you run out of O2. It is interesting to explore a place you were never meant to see, but there's an extra gameplay reason for this as well, because some planets have underwater creatures which you can scan or harvest for resources. Next up, we have Project Warfare Hardened Edition by 510D Sean, and this basically turns Starfield into Call of Duty. It adds eight new weapons that tread the line between cutting edge military weaponry and near future sci fi equipment, so it really fits the Starfield brand incredibly well. According to the creation's official description, this brings the firepower of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered into the Starfield universe, featuring meticulously crafted standalone guns with stunning. 4K textures, this mod elevates your combat experience with a wide range of customizable options. Whether you're a fan of futuristic weaponry or classic remasters, Project Warfare offers something for every shooter enthusiast, or so says the description. From my time with this, I found nine guns, which you can see here, and these are the likes of the Hornet, the Volk, and the Kendall 44. And the creator says more updates are planned, so this arsenal will greatly expand. To get your hands on these guns in the game, you will need to buy them at specific vendors. One of these is the Neon Trade Authority, and you can either go to the vending machine in the corner or talk to the vendor himself. Another is Roland Arms in Aquila City, and also at the weapon dealer in Hopetown. So head there to find these weapons in the game. I also suggest a way to improve the combat experience in Starfield, and that's by downloading the realistic screen shaking and injuries mod, which makes the moment to moment gunplay feel that much more like COD, because you get screen effects when you take damage. Although, if you take quite a lot of damage, it can get a bit distracting.
Another mod I really suggest you download is Rabbit Real Lights New Atlantis by Rabbit Does Stuff. This is a complete lighting overhaul that adds over 700 hand placed light sources into the city, as well as tweaks to the lights themselves for more realism and better visibility at nighttime. Are you tired of unlogical lamp placements or unlit walking routes? Writes Rabbit Does Stuff. Ever looked at white decals and asked yourself, is this a light or a bug? This mod's got you covered. So they've done things like added lights to landing pads to make ships visible, added lights to realistic spots where you would expect to find a light, and more. So big neon signs that should be much brighter than they are now give off the right level of glow and illumination. Their creator hasn't just stopped at New Atlantis though, they've got another mod adding 200 new lights into Cydonia, and even a special landing pad creation adding lights to landing pads, which is a much more authentic visual because landing pads kind of do need lights. However, this only affects newly built landing pads, so new pads built at your outposts. Existing landing pads won't have the new lights added. For even better results, I also recommend downloading Darker Nights. This drives up the contrast between light and dark. But make sure to put the lighting mod itself last in your load order for this to work. One last thing, the lights don't automatically turn themselves off in the day. That's the only drawback of this and that might affect performance. So if you're on PC, you will want to make sure you got a fairly strong system. Here we have a climate change by Samantha Says TV, and this is a creation that massively increases the variety of weather across the entire settled systems. It matches the appropriate weather types to the biome and climate too, so it never looks weird. For instance, coniferous forests and deciduous forests now have overcast weather, which they didn't have before, and the same goes for tropical forests, plateaus, rocky deserts, and sandy deserts, which now have heavy rain because, believe it or not, rain does happen in the deserts. Settlements and points of interest also have new weather types added into the randomly generated pool. So Aquila now has overcast, heavy rain, and thunderstorms, 
Argos Extractors Mining Outpost now has clear cloudy overcast rain, so on. Gagarin has a bunch of new stuff, Crete Research Lab, etc. So this really ups the variety in the weather. Some locations even have their own special weather, so New Atlantis has a weather pattern called Clear, which is its own unique weather that's designed to make it look as good as possible. Of course, some climates are completely unchanged, so frozen planets already have appropriate weather patterns in the game, and they've been left untouched by this creation. And Earth has no weather because in Starfield, it no longer has a climate. And lastly, the Bizarre Bizarre by Digital Harm. If you're looking for a use for your credits, this is the creation for you. This is actually one of the weirdest creations I've ever seen in Starfield and basically adds a vending machine that dispenses rare and valuable trading cards from popular collectible card games. So we have Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, and more. And there is something weird but strangely comforting about unearthing an ancient card of a Zapdos or a Pot of Greed. And the idea is, like most card trading games, to collect them all. You get them by heading to the Emporium located on Neon. This place recently installed a vending machine that apparently runs Windows and dispenses vintage trading cards. You are allowed 10 spins per day, with each spin costing 1,000 credits. And trust me, anything can come out of this. There are 180 cards to collect right now, so this will keep you going for a while. And some of these are actually worth quite a lot if you decide to sell them. So they can act as a form of currency. If you've not got the credits to buy a spin at the vending machine, this update also allows cards to spawn as rare loot throughout the galaxy. So while you're exploring your next outpost, have a little extra look around and you might come across a super rare Charizard card. So those are five creations I recommend downloading right now and I will leave you with some Starfield gameplay but if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more Starfield videos and let me know down in the comments what creations you are currently having the most fun with.